Draft. My name is Brian Krogsgaard, and I am here with two people who most of our audience knows really well. Uh, the general manager of iThemes, Matt Danner, the managing director of Sand Hills Development, Pippin Williamson. Y'all have some news today, but first off, welcome. Hey, thank, thank you. you very much, Brian. Uh, I'm really pleased to have y'all here. Congratulations on the news. Um, I'll go ahead and spill it, and that is that iThemes has acquired Restrict Content Pro from Sand Hills Development, and this is a product purchase, right? This is not a people move. Um, Correct. Correct. So let's get the meat and potatoes out of the way first. Uh, when did this go down? When is it official? What's that? What's that situation look like? This, uh, well, we're. We're, we're talking about this a little bit ahead of time, I guess, but this What's is this? official the day that you're listening to this. Awesome. Uh, it's September 1st, 2020, right? Today is indeed September 1st, 2020. So welcome everybody Perfect. on September 1st, 2020. It's beautiful. It's sunny outside. Uh, <laughs> low humidity everywhere. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's official as of right now. And what is the... Pippin, let's start with you. What's the emotional component of this? Of uh, one of your earliest products, one of your earliest plugins, had a lot of momentum. You've talked about your year in reviews, how you know you guys revived the product significantly, put a big team behind it, grew it to just under half a million dollars in revenue in 2019. So, what emotions are you going through uh, now, letting go of it? Uh, it was a lot of up and down um, initially when the conversation first started, my gut reaction was, oh, hell no. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> um, so Restrict Content Pro over the last year and a half, or ba basically since the time that we decided to revitalize it, which was a few years ago, um, has, has grown very successfully, consistently, and is today and over the last year or so, a product that we've been really, really happy with. It's a product we ha we've had a solid team behind it. We've been very happy with where it's going, um, both from the product perspective, the development perspective, and and also just a finances number. Um, it's a profitable product, and we really had no intention whatsoever of selling it. This was not something that we reached out to anybody to you know uh, facilitate a potential buyer. Um, we had no plans for that. So when we first got approached, um, the initial response was, yeah, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, and when we started to realize that it was, that this was a serious conversation that actually we were very interested in having, which took a few months. Um, if you've read the blog post that we just published earlier today, um, I've shared a little bit about that, but it, uh, initially we had almost want to say there was a little bit of regret or sadness of like, Hey, we've done really, really good with this product view. You, you know, it's, it's a foundational product for our company. It's one of the very first things that we built. It's probably the product that is, uh, largely responsible for Sandhills development, turning into what it is today. Um, and we don't really want to let it go because we, we love the product. Um, but we ended up choosing to continue with our conversations about letting it go and moving it over to iThemes and Liquid Web because we realized something, which was basically that this was an opportunity for us to significantly improve and increase our existing resources on our other products. So for anybody that's not aware, basically Sandhills Development is split up into several primary products and brands. Each one of those, those, uh, those products has a dedicated development team, um, a support team where we have people that work primarily on that product, um, and then also the marketing team, which kind of works across all of them. And as a result of that, we've always been spread thinner than we would like. Mm. Um, you know, we could, the, the truth is, if you gave me 10 developers today, we could keep them busy. 
you give me five new writers today, we could keep them busy. Five marketers, we can keep them busy. We there's like there's no such thing as having enough people resources. Yeah. Um, and so typically the way that you that a company solves that is you hire more people. Well, hiring more people has certain challenges. Um, and transferring research content pro to iThemes slash liquid web gave us a really interesting opportunity. We realized pretty early on that we were really most interested in having a product acquisition conversation as opposed to um, a people conversation or like the full company. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to transfer the product but keep our people, then we effectively get the benefits of hiring whatever people we've kept. Like, so if, if we had three people working on it, we have effectively hired three people once this transition period is over because those three people will move over to our other products. Right. So from an emotional standpoint, it was actually really exciting because we get to reduce the workload for our existing team. We get to increase the, the resources on our other products and we get to narrow our focus. Nice. So Matt, on y'all's side of this, I mean, iThemes um, really has, I've, I feel like, um, carved into a niche that you guys have done well for a long time, ever since you transitioned from themes into plugins with backup buddy and sync and, uh, security was a perfect, uh, blend of that. Y'all have done e-commerce before, but it was greenfield, uh, and, and it didn't work out. It was, you know, the timing wasn't good. The product was good, but the timing wasn't good and the fit wasn't right. And the pro and the market wasn't there. So yeah. this is distinctly different to me, but I want to hear from your perspective, why this round of doing an e-commerce product is different. What, what makes uh, restrict content pro the right fit where your previous e-commerce attempts weren't, you know, y'all ended up having to decide they weren't. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of answers from our perspective here. First and foremost is just that um, I have a ton of respect for so many developers in the WordPress space, but I would there are very few that I would put in the same category of Pippin and his team, uh, Pippin and Chris and Ashley, so many people on their team. Um, I'm not telling anybody something new that the, these folks are like, some of the best in the business. And so anything that they, especially something like Restrict, Con Restrict Content Pro, that they've done such a dramatic revamp in recent years of, um, we knew that we were getting to start with something really awesome. And that's not to say that our previous attempts, I'm not proud of what we built code-wise, but um, also memberships very specifically are something we identified last year. This was This is an opportunity we are very interested in pursuing. Uh, I think there's a lot of history with memberships specifically. Mm -hmm. um, we run a small membership site um, where we sell themes and plugins to people. Um, we've run that for iThemes.com as a membership site for the last 12 years. Uh, we've also run a training site for iThemes training for a lot of years as a, as a training site. It's something we feel like we have a lot of experience with. And, you know, there's there's so many options partner build by uh, right. when you look at, okay, this is a direction we want to go. And we just sort of started evaluating all of them. Um, did we want to bring a new player into the market, which is something we have tried before in several spaces. Um, and we know the challenges that becoming a brand new player in established markets, there's, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of opportunities also when you're, when you get to start fresh and you get to, you know, learn the lessons for, that everybody else learned the hard way getting here and you get to start fresh learning those lessons. Yeah, there's no backwards so building compatibility it, hiccups uh, until, yes. until you start maintaining it. Yeah. And so build it is obviously always going to be appealing. Um, we've gone the partnership route with various folks where, uh, you know, we don't own it, they own it, but we're partners in this. And and honestly, that that's was something we were open to. And then obviously an acquisition um, was interesting, but then it has to be has to be the right acquisition. And so once we kind of realized that Pippin was open and, and this could be a possibility, um, you know, iThemes has done 
most people maybe may, may not even realize uh, we've been a part of quite a few acquisitions. Um, and, you know, you're always starting with varying levels of, of code base and uh, what that handoff looks like. And, um, you know, I can say, I, I don't think I'm saying anything I shouldn't hear when I say that when we did the started the code review, cause that's a part of the due diligence process that just has to be done. We started code review and the like smiles on developers faces as we were doing this code review, like, yeah, this is, this is exciting that this is what we get to work with. Um, yeah. And you know, you're, so, you know, you're dealing some with something developed by, I don't know, like WordPress natives and people that take the, um, you know, the coding standards in the WordPress ecosystem and abiding by the relative standards, uh, um, take that seriously so that people extending the plugin can, you know, know what they're looking at when they do it. So yeah, I'm sure yeah. that was appealing. And, and not to just keep blowing smoke at, uh, at Pippin here, but a core part of the iThemes DNA has always been, uh, the customer, like, we've not always been the very first to the market. We've not always been maybe the most revolutionary in every single thing we've done, but we've always cared deeply about the customer. And I know Pippin and his team fit that as well. I, honestly, that's why I themes and liquid Web, liquid web made such a good fit when we got acquired by them is liquid web is very much a customer first type of organization. And when you're getting into an acquisition, there are so many scary things about what's going to happen to existing customers, new customers. And I knew without even saying it or talking about it, although we did, I knew with Pippin, we never had to worry about like, well, is he going to leave customers hanging just to get this little, this extra thing in the deal or that, you know, he went into it and we went into it with a like, okay, this is, th this is a, the right deal. Now, how do we make this happen where the customers are all taken care of yeah. and in an, in an acquisition that's sometimes tough to do, uh, which made doing this deal with Sandhills uh, that much easier. So when y'all- And that definitely goes both ways. I mean, we we knew that that iThemes was a team that was absolutely gonna care for the customer base going forward. Um, I mean, sure, we had conversations about it, but in terms of, we never once had to lay out please make sure that you do X, Y, and Z to take care of the customers. Like, cause that's, that was just a given. We knew that was going to happen because of the existing track record that um, Matt and the iThemes team already has, uh, which frankly made our conversations, I think a lot simpler, mm -hmm. but also a lot more effective. Cause we already knew that we were on the same page there. From yeah, day it's, one. it's not like this was the first suitor y'all have had for some of your products. I'm sure y'all no. have had regular approaches. So other things had to come into the mix there. Uh, Matt, when y'all acquired better WP security and brought on Chris Wegman, that was, I feel like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like maybe your most successful acquisition and seeing the benefits of an existing plugin audience. Um, Absolutely. Even though that was a, that was a mostly free plugin and y'all, you know, turned it into a different, uh, you know, adjusted the model to fit iThemes in general. But is that did that kind of pave the path for how you wanted to approach this acquisition? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think so. It it was a little bit different in that it was a almost entirely free product, so you know there's no uh, revenue or existing customers, so to speak. There's just a user base, right? Um, and our our approach there was definitely uh, what we saw in Better WP Security was a really solid community around a product that we wanted to support that community and then turn a certain percentage of those into customers, mm -hmm. um, which is what we still to this day do. The, the free version is uh, still, you know, being used on a million sites. Uh, we still do regular updates to the free version. It's, it's always that trick, uh, that tricky freemium model of uh, how do we make a valuable free product? Because, nobody, there's no point if it's not a good product, but, um, and then how do we add other things on top of it that are, uh, worth buying for the right customer? Not every customer, not, not every user is right for the pro version. The, the free version may just, yeah, may you don't, just fine, you, you don't want the free version to be a, just a trap for an upgrade. You want it to be a value add for additional yeah. features and where that's a clear delineation for people. 
Yeah. And we felt like better WP security already kind of had that really solid, um, free tool set that worked well. I mean, obviously it worked well because there were a lot of people using it and there was a great community around it. And so what we did with Chris, uh, was start saying, all right, here, here are the things that, you know, um, this, it really is a perfect model for what we've wanted to do with other acquisitions is to say, uh, it maybe doesn't apply quite as much to this one in particular, because Pippin had, uh, quite a few resources that were on this, but, you know, for, uh, not to speak for Chris, but um, I think what Chris needed was time yeah. to be able to develop out the, he he knew what the, the pro version could be. He didn't have the time and the resources at that particular point to do it. And so we got to just partner alongside of him and, and help see that through. And it has, it's been um, a very successful product for us. Uh, I think security is by far our fastest growing uh, product line. Um, it, it's been an exciting one. And the difference between that and Greenfield is if people were talking about, hey, install this security plugin, when you acquire it, it's already in that conversation of like, here's five options or whatever and, and pick one. Now in memberships, uh, you know, there's a lot of membership plugins out there, but I feel like, for, especially from a historical perspective, if you say, hey, what do you want to use for memberships website? Uh, there's a lot of options, but RCP is always going to be in the conversation for what's available and y'all are inherently, um, you know, bringing that in house. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there are certain parts of it that seem way scarier than starting from scratch, but that in particular is one that it's very nice to not be, uh, yeah. we've always said, uh, anybody that knows, have you ever heard of Corey Miller? Um, anybody <laughs> that knows Corey very well, we've always said that like launching a new product is like taking off a 747. It takes a lot of runway. It takes a lot of time. Um, there, there's some huge advantages to it, but this is one of those instances where we really feel uh, starting taking something that has so much momentum, has so much community around it. Um, and us just continuing to build forward with that was just, it was a great opportunity. And when, once we talked to Pippin and realized we could make it a reality, uh, it's been something I've been so excited about. I've got another question for you before we jump back over to Pippin and that is around the, the people side of things. So you said you have a developer audit, but you know, the Sandhills team is staying there. Um, and I guess Pippin, this is a combo question in in a way, how do y'all transition this whole thing? for this stated goal of the seamlessness for the customer, you know, there's support, there's updates there's things like that. Matt, you have to onboard a team to manage this product from a development support perspective. Pippin, you want to make this as smooth of the handoff as you can, because a lot of these customers are still your customers of other products. Y'all have a lot of overlap there. So um, I don't care who starts. I should be leading to say who starts, but somebody start and let me know how you're handling this. If, If I may, yeah, please. Okay. Um, so this was definitely one of the, the things that we had a lot of conversations about on, you know, how do we best handle this and what we ended up doing, uh, which I think has worked very successfully so far is we, we basically agreed to a six month transition period where for the, uh, the first few months, uh, basically we break it into two sections. So for the first half, our team was going to handle, continue to handle basically everything. Um, literally no changes whatsoever in, in the development and the support and really anything. Um, and so we, we did, we did that. And then for the second half, basically we brought in, um, the iThemes team, uh, and during, during the initial half, basically our team is consistently working with iThemes to bring their team up to speed. Um, help them learn the ins and outs of how we do customer support, how we do development, what our development roadmap is, what our development priorities and what our development standards are. And then in this, in the second half, basically we now split the obligate or split the duties. And so now, you know, we have our team is 50% on it. Their team is 50% on it. Um, and then at the end of the period, uh, we, we handed hundred percent over to iThemes. Um, and that will be there if we need to call you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Just kidding. 
good news is that we not. have good we have very good relationships back and forth and so you know if if we need something or there's a question there's absolutely n there's no doubt in anybody's mind that you know each side is available to the other to answer a question or take care of something um but basically it was the, the our plan was laid out to make sure that we have a smooth transition period yeah um and, and you know obviously um the team that's been a part of uh rcp for the last several years you know it's it's been the same team they have so much knowledge and so getting to pair them with our team um and say you know tell us what we don't know uh and and, and we don't know we don't even know the right questions to ask just uh let us tag along for a little while and that's honestly how it sort of started was our team just following the day-to-day -day, uh from both support and from development, and then slowly handing things off to say, for us to take on a little bit more, you know, quite honestly, Ashley assigning things and saying, here's something that needs to be done, go get it. Um, and, and slowly we'll shift that over. And, uh, but it, it'll be a nice long phase out uh, as the uh, Sandhills team starts on new, whatever's new over there for, uh, for Pippin and Sandhills, but we, we still, we're very glad that we still have access. I'm, I'm super confident in our team. I've been blown away by how quickly they have learned, which is in no small part, thanks to the RCP team, uh, at Sandhills. But, um, you know, it, as with any acquisition, the transition agreement that you kind of put in place, you want as much time and roadmap to learn from the folks that have been doing it for a long time. And, uh, so that's what, that's what Pippin and I kind of put together. That's cool. Um, on per Matt's, uh, insinuation, like that it enables you guys to move on to other things with the team members that you had focusing on restrict content pro much less like the roadmap that you had for RCP or like growth plan, whatever, all of that transitions into, existing products or new ones um what are your goals in terms of how to reallocate your team uh, moving forward we've got a couple of uh initial changes that are hap going to happen right away um so uh our rcp team primarily composed of two people which was ashley gibson as our lead, our lead developer and then uh mihai jolvis as our primary support person for him um so from a support perspective um, we, Mihai is hopping on to our other products there to help lessen the load of those, of his other team members there, um, which is enormously helpful. Um, one thing that we, so we, something we used to do is we had our team split up into, you know, you work on affiliate IP support, you work on easy digital download support, you work on RCP support. There, everybody's very siloed. We've been working on in the last couple of years of making it so kind of everybody does a little bit of everything. Everybody has a focus product, but is able to jump in and lend a hand anywhere else they need, you know, at, as needed. Um, so that's going to be an enormously beneficial for our support team because um, our support team also keep in mind, um, like many support teams, do a lot more than just answer support tickets. Uh, there's a lot of documentation work that, that falls under the support team. There's a lot of uh, billing and account related management that falls under the support team. And so just having more people there is enormously helpful. And then on the development side, we've always had a, a lead person for each one of our products. So Ashley was the lead for Restrict Content Pro. Well, when our transition period is over, she is going to hop in and become the lead for easy digital downloads. Now, up until now, uh, our easy digital downloads lead has been Chris Glasowski. Well, Chris Kosowski is also our director of technology. And so he's had a dual role for a long time. He's leading a product, but he's also trying to lead our entire development team, um, which is anybody who's ever done, you know, two jobs at one time, it's, it's difficult. You don't actually get 50% on one and 50% on the other. It's more like 35, 35 or 40, 40, because you had, you know, you have the, the loss of efficiency in the, when you try to change gears or, um, you know, you're having different types of conversations. So he is going to be able to move over and become just the director of technology and be able to lead and be in that role significantly more, uh, a lot, you'll be able to be a lot more effective at it. And then Ashley will be able to take over the lead of, of EDD. So that's going to be awesome. 
Uh, Ashley has done a tremendous job with RCP. I mean, she is hands down um, responsible for so much of the growth and improvements that RCP had for the last few years. And to be able to put 100% of her attention on the EDD project uh, is going to be great. Um, and all of our EV customer base is going to see the significant benefits of that happening, especially as we're getting ready to um, ship our, our EDD 3.0 version, which has been a long time coming, but is very, very close. And Ashley has already proven that she has a tremendous ability to manage complicated data migrations. Our 3.0 version of easy digital downloads is the biggest data migration we've <laughs> ever done. And a particular no set of skills will be necessary. <laughs> and there is no better person to lead that than Ashley Gibson. That's good. Um, and then I guess my other question in terms of how y'all are refocusing your team is this, I mean, this was just under half a million dollar product. Affiliate WP last year was almost 1.3. Easy digital downloads was over a million dollars. But then you did have like, you were just getting, you know, ramping up like sugar calendar, simple pay you had brought in with revenue, but like it's, a, you know, it's a little smaller than RCP or was. Um, is there any change in kind of how you're allocating the rest of that stuff between the big products and the small products and some of that balance? Um, a little bit. Um, I think mainly in having, having Chris be able to, Chris Kosowski step into a dedicated role as the director of technology. His goal is to make our development teams as efficient and effective as possible. Um, and that will have a cascading effect on all of the products. Um, but in terms of increasing resources on any one of those particular products, WP Simple Pay, Sugar Calendar, our payout service, Affiliate WP, uh, at least as far as the RCP acquisition is concerned, those probably won't change um, un until we bring in more development resources. Gotcha. Uh, so Matt, what, what do y'all want to do with Restrict Content Pro? What it, uh, you know, it may look a little different under the direction of iThemes than it would have under the roadmap that Sandhills had put together. Um, so what do you see as the path forward? Yeah. Um, I mean, if I'm being really honest, uh, it's, it's got a, it's got a big community behind it. It's it, not to go back to plane. I'm not a pilot or anything, but I'm going to keep using, but this is not this is not a, a jet fighter that we're just going to turn on a dime to a new direction. This has momentum, uh, good, positive, growing momentum. Uh, Pippin is known for being transparent, and so everybody knows how uh, how much this has been growing. Um, and they they've done so many great things that I think has no intention of just like turning this thing on a dime. And uh, one of the awesome things that Pippin, Ashley, and Mihai. Uh, and Chris as well have they've shared a lot of what was in the roadmap for 3.4 3.5 um, we're continuing with those our team is actively deving on uh, issues as they were put in by the Sandhills team um, to keep pushing and we we honestly believe it was going in a great direction it's it's a great project heading somewhere great um, I think that Initially, our goal is to just keep heading uh, where it was heading, but integrate it uh, more closely with some of our other products um, and, and kind of start there. But I, I think over time, you know, um, what, one thing that excites me is that iThemes has always been a lot more focused on uh, maybe the front end user than the someone with some dev skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to continue pushing um, in the direction that Pippin and Sandhills uh, pushed for making a great developer tool that exists. Um, but we think that there, I think there are some things on, from the iThemes perspective on how we have built in the past for uh, less technical, more front end users um, that we're excited. But I'll be honest and say those aren't happening like right now. They're, 
you know, our focus right now is to keep the, keep the plane, keep the ship moving forward in the, this awesome direction it's going. And we'll, it'll definitely start with some integrations with our existing products first uh, before we start trying to put our own touch on it. Um, We've learned so much about RCP. Um, You know, obviously we knew it, we had used it, but in the past few months, we've gotten to know RCP very well, but I still think we have even more to learn. And that's why I'm so glad we have this transition time with Pippin and his team to continue learning, to continue understanding the community, understanding the customer base, um, because that's a that's really important to us. We don't want to uh, we don't want to steer away from the existing customer base. We want to lean into that existing customer base. And so, uh, I feel like it's our responsibility first and foremost is to just keep learning. Um, and Pippin and Ashley and Mihai have given us such a great uh, you know roadmap for the next few months to where we can keep doing that. We, we don't have to stop. We don't have to quit, you know, the momentum. We can keep moving forward uh, before we have to start, you know, making our own roadmap. So we got training wheels a little bit, it feels like. Yeah. I guess some of this is purely a audience thing where, you know, Sand Hills has a particular audience, a particular marketing strategy. People often, I guess, viewed y'all's products, Pippin as like almost a bundle um, and those, that big batch of potential customers is probably a little different than the big batch of potential customers that are part of iThemes marketing engine through their email list and their social audiences and their organic marketing. So part of what makes this make sense from an acquisition perspective, I presume has to be that Matt, you guys feel like you can take a great product put it in front of a slightly different audience, maybe more of a Wrangler front end type versus development type and take advantage of that to justify having made the purchase. Yeah. uh, That, I mean, that's definitely the, the long-term vision. Um, I think what we just, you know, again, what we want to be conscious of is uh, there's, this isn't a small community uh, that exists. It's a large community that exists. And we really do want to also figure out, how to serve them. And then I think that feeds back into our other products as well is how could we make our other products serve that uh, community better as well. So uh, it really does, it goes both ways for us. Yeah. That gets me thinking about from an integrations perspective uh, on the flip side of that, Pippin, y'all have tight integrations in a lot of the stuff that you do. Um, Are there any things that you had to really work through in order to, make the transition the way you wanted to like i don't think uh i know affiliate wp like had a integration but i don't think the payout service had anything to do with rcp but like were there you know like some of those tight integrations that y'all had purposefully put on your side of things did any of that have to kind of come into consideration with selling the product not really um i mean we have integrations with easy digital downloads affiliate wp um a couple of custom integrations with, with smaller other things, integrations with sugar calendar. Um, all of those, frankly, they don't, they don't really change at all. I mean, because restricted content pro as a product is, is still going to be here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, it's not going away. It's just going conti- to con- continue to grow and, and be there and get better under iThemes lead. So there's really nothing with those integrations that needed to change other than we are not the caretakers of RCP anymore. Just goes from first um, party. But we're still going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so like, let's say use Affiliate P as an example. That has integrations with dozens of other plugins, plugins and products. Um, you know, we integrate with pretty much every single membership plugin, every single e-commerce plugin, uh, just about every single form builder plugin that has some form of e-commerce in it. Um, and so even if, iThemes had always been the owners of Research Content Pro and the builders of it. We would have still offered that integration. The only, like, there's really no difference to it in that regard. Um, and just because we are no longer the, the maintainers of Research Content Pro doesn't mean that we're going to get rid of those. That would be silly um, because it does have a large audience and we have a large number of people inside of our Philadelphia WP product that are also users of Research Content Pro. Um, and so, no, there's really nothing that's going to change there. Um, but we're, we will absolutely continue to maintain them and continue to improve them. Um, and then 
from a business perspective, y'all have multiple partners in the business. Um, and then I'm trying to remember, you've given me advice on how to manage multiple things under one umbrella, but th this was not an independent LLC, was it? It was a. So uh, kind of a, if you don't mind me sharing a quick little backstory, that's kind of, to me is interesting. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe eight years ago, uh, I took some advice from a friend, which was basically that I should set up separate LLCs for each one of the different products that I'm building. So, you know, at, the, at that time, we were building Affiliate OP, we were building Easy Digital Downloads, we were building Restricted Content Pro. And so I should separate them all into different, their own LLCs, you know, keep, keep all of their finances separate, keep the legal status structure, keep all of that separate, keep their employment separate, keep everything separate. And I built all of this up underneath one umbrella company. I went through a few years of that. Um, and I don't think the advice was wrong for the situation that the friend that gave me that advice and the, the way that they were running their own company. But it was wrong for me. And I realized it was the most ridiculous hassle that I've ever done. It was so annoying. So we actually, uh, in 2018, think, uh, maybe 2017, we consolidated everything back down to one LLC. Mm -hmm. However, I did take one really big lesson from that advice. And when we initially done that, which was to ensure that our individual products or brands do have some degree of separation. And so we keep everything underneath one formal ownership, one LLC, but we, we separate out all of our merchant accounts our email marketing, our customer support, our, our product development. We separate all of those out into their own accounts, basically. So, and this is something I, I shared in our, our blog post today on sandalsdev.com. Um, what that enabled, which was really, really beneficial, is it basically allowed us to just reassign the ownership of those accounts and package it up nicely and hand it to Liquid mm. Um, You know, and, and there's a lot of acquisitions that happen where you know, let, let's just take somebody's Stripe account. You know, you're selling subscriptions inside of Stripe and you've got three different Ultimate products. Products. Yeah, and then when you go through the acquisition process, you have to go through, to be blunt, the hellhole that is trying to migrate those billing accounts from one Stripe account to another or one PayPal account to another, and it's miserable. It's absolutely a terrible experience for everybody involved. It's extremely prone to error other problems are going to happen. And so years ago, we decided we're not going to do that. We are going to intentionally set everything up so that if the day ever comes that we choose to sell a product, we can basically hand them the keys and say, here you go. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm very glad that we did that. One, because today we are in the, uh, the position of having sold a product and learning the benefits of doing that. Because literally we went into our Stripe account, we gave it a new owner, we go to our PayPal account, we give it a new owner, and we're done. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a little bit more to it than that, but you know, there's there's no data migration. Uh, I we, There's a few things that we didn't do. Like we, we kept all of our website hosting inside of one web host account. So like that has to be migrated out, but that that's easy, all things considered. We're all web um, web people. So like that, that yeah, yeah. like I, we can migrate a database. That's not a problem. Yeah. Wait, uh, I just want, I thought you were just giving us root access to that system. <laughs> to the rest nope. of it. We'll yep. have to talk about that afterwards. <laughs> ah, come on. Uh, so we basically enter, uh, we, we've had this philosophy for a while uh, that, that came from the advice that I originally got from a friend that was to make sure that you build everything so that it can be sold. Because the truth is, is that you really, every product, every company has one of three possibilities. And I have yet to come up with a, with a fourth possibility. There's three things that can happen. A product will slowly die. A product will be retired voluntarily. Or a product will be sold and carried on by a new owner. One of those three, three, three things will absolutely happen to every single product, every single brand, every single company, without exception. And so one of the best things that I think that we as uh, product and company owners can do is make sure that we have set everything up to make sure that it can be carried on by somebody else 
you know, it can be sold, it can be transferred. And, you know, whether that transfer happens in um, a sale like today with the RCP acquisition by iThemes and Liquid Web, or it happens due to, you know, the unfortunate situation of, of a death of a founder or something like that. This is something that we should absolutely be doing to ensure that we are protecting our customers and our user base. Yeah. Um, and so we got to see the benefits of that with this. And, and that was pretty cool. Nice. Uh, um, yeah, I know you did a ton of planning. And then, as you mentioned, adjustments of that plan over time. This allows you to still package it up, sell it, and have it taken care of. But at the same time, acknowledging that all of your products are still part of one company. Uh, so sure. that, that makes a lot of sense. Matt, when you're making uh, what I presume is a seven-figure acquisition here, uh, half a million bucks, maybe two, three, four X of revenue, something like that. Um, y'all don't have to spill the beans on that, but my napkin math, I mean, listeners can make assumptions. Um, either way, we're looking at a seven figure acquisition. It's not nothing for really any company and nobody just writes checks for a million dollars or more, um, you know, without any thought at all. How much did that help from a due diligence perspective to know that like, this wasn't going to be an absolute nightmare to transition? I'm going to be honest and say, we didn't know initially (laughs) how subdivided out it was. And I remember very specifically some of our due diligence meetings where we started, you know, and we've done these before. I I know exactly how complicated it can be. And, you know, we went into, I, I, there were a couple that I can, a couple of meetings I can remember very vividly where Pippin was like, yeah, yeah, we'll just sign that over to you. And I was like, let's just, we can just we can just have it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, it's so it's separate from everything. And I was like, Oh, well, we just had an hour long. I scheduled this hour long meeting to discuss how to migrate that. So you know, we want to talk about woodworking for the next hour. Uh, we already got the hour scheduled. Um, and it, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sell short all of the work that has gone into uh, making this transition as easy as possible as we can on the customers, because that's been all of our goals uh, from the beginning is how can we um, how can we make this transition smooth to where existing customers don't have any hiccups or interruptions. Uh, and I, I don't want to take away from that work, but yeah, this was, this was relatively easy. When, um, the, when the corporate transition is smooth, it's going to make the longer term transition of the customer experience much smoother as well. Yeah. When, when he literally just added me as a user in Stripe and then says ch- owner change, it's like, Oh, uh, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> so if so Pippin, you're think... ever selling another product in the future, just send them to this interview and be like, Hey, listen to this. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> now that's going to be another, uh, I, I will say that like, changing the owner in Stripe <laughs> was extremely anticlimactic. <laughs> yes. I was like, somebody else done? gets this money now. And that's all I had to do. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't know. Did I, did we miss anything? <laughs> yeah. I, man, that's one, th- that's the trend of, uh, acquisition closings is there's all this buildup for months and then like when you actually do it you schedule the morning and you like sign it and then especially you know doing this during uh quarantines basically you know no one was even remotely face to face for any of this it's very anticlimactic to sit in your house or you know at the brewery and well it was basically this we we sat on a zoom call and i was like yep i got the wire transfer cool Here's screen share. I'm changing the account ownership. We're done. <laughs> See Bye, you. guys. Yeah, that's wild. M- M&A yeah. over Zoom and uh, yeah. taking pictures of contracts with your phone. Um, what am I What am I missing here? What do y'all want to leave the audience with? I mean, both of you have customers uh, on the line that are probably, you know, listening. So why don't we start with you, Pippin? Like, what do you want to tell customers in terms of where, you know, the hands you're leaving them in and this decision and all that? Well, I have two things. So one, I'll, I'll say to our, our customer audience, um, and then the other one, um, if Matt will permit me, I want to uh, bring up a quick little thing that was pretty interesting that was a side effect of doing this in the middle of COVID. Yeah. Um, that actually was really kind of interesting. Uh, so for all of our restricted content pro customers um we have there are some that have been with us for literally eight years or more um restricted content pro is our oldest product um and it has been a foundational product for us for a really really long time um 
Sand Hills Development probably would not be here today if we had not built RCP. Um, and to be completely transparent, it's not easy handing it over. Um, you know, it was uh, a very mixed bag of emotions. However, I really don't think that there is any other team in WordPress that is better suited to handle it than iThemes. Um, iThemes has been around longer than Sandhills Dev has. And I have watched iThemes go through some amazing ups and downs, um, awesome successes, um, some challenges, and watched how they handle both. Um, and I have 100% confidence in them. And I, I hope you will believe me that I'm not just trying to save face when I tell you, like, I really don't believe there is a better team to handle this. Um, I have 100% confidence in their ability to do it, and I'm excited to watch it. I'm glad I didn't let Corey on this call. Right. <laughs> uh, what was the so what was the COVID side of this? Uh, th that was. The, I hope I don't get myself in trouble, Matt. For no, this. that's fine. Uh, Go for it. So we had an interesting experience uh, in this. Uh, so as I, sh I shared in our, our, our blog post today, uh, this conversation originally started back in October of last year, 2019, and really got serious, I think, in, in February. Well, in, in February, we had pretty well decided that we were probably going to do it. And then we spent the month of March, um, you know, Putting, to, putting together the initial proposals and coming to agreements. Um, well, also in the middle of March, COVID-19 hit America. And, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty. We really didn't know what was going to happen. You know, we, we have uh, businesses closing up left and right. We have state mandated shutdowns. We have quarantines all over the place. But there's an interesting side effect of being an online company that specializes in building foundational products for businesses. So you have to keep in mind that what Sandhills Development builds and has always built are the products that help people run their businesses. We build e-commerce, we build the affiliate marketing side of things, we build the membership platforms so that people can run their own online businesses. People can sell their own digital products or their own membership content uh, and to run their affiliate programs for their, their products. And so we skyrocketed mm. in March. Our sales went up significantly because well, we, we presume, like, we honestly don't know, but we're, we can only assume it's because all of a sudden there are these huge numbers of people that are staying home either by choice or unfortunately not by their choice. And they're looking to boost their side gigs, start their side gigs or move into new territory. And so they're building membership websites. They're building e-commerce websites. They're doing all of these things. And so sales on all of our products were up. And enough that in Restrict Content Pro included, that I went, like we had literally just gotten our letter of intent that says we're planning to enter into a contract and we're gonna spend the next month getting that contract clear. I went to Matt and I was like, ah, uh, I need a 30 day pause because these last three weeks have been crazy. Mm. I don't know, is this the new normal? Because at that point, if this became the new normal, like we got to renegotiate yeah. because the numbers that we have agreed on do not make sense. If this is a one-time blip, you know, it's a, it's, it's a different story, but we didn't know. And so doing this in the middle of a global pandemic was a really, really interesting roller coaster. At the end, we did we did come to an agreement. Uh, we made a couple of changes to our contract, um, and I think everybody was was very happy at the end. Um, it was it was fair to both sides. It helped account for if this was the new normal, if it was going to dip back down to where we had you know what we built the evaluation on. Um, but it also, 
raised a really interesting question for us as Sandhills Development. Like, forget about whether the price is fair or not. Is this even when we should consider selling a profitable product? Like, what if we go into a non-profitable period and we can't get out of it? Like, what if our sales tank for the next six months? Yeah. Like, this is the worst time to sell a product. Yeah. Was that was one of the things that like that we considered, um, and we actually uh, flip flopped on that and decided that that was one of the reasons that we should proceed with this um, because of some opportunities it gave us, um, which was basically to everybody right now across the world is stressed, and this is an opportunity for us to lower stress. We can lower the workload for our team, and. It also allows us to not only lower the workload for our team, but to put some money in the bank right. and insulate our team further. If you know what, if things continue and we do see downturns, this is a good opportunity for us. So that's really interesting. I know a lot, a lot of people are struggling with that. And also I know a lot of WordPress businesses in particular web-based businesses saw that phenomenon. Matt, I'm curious if y'all, uh, if y'all saw a change in customer behavior and then also I want to get into this, uh, the same questions about speaking to the audience. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been a very weird, I don't know, however many months it's been, um, you know, uh, like Pippin said, we, we, along, or at the same time we were seeing a pickup on our side and, and it was that same, um, you know, initially you just want to know why, like you're, you start trying to figure out why so that you can keep it going or, or whatever. But, um, you know, at, at iThemes, it was, we started to see some things pick up and we started seeing the uncertainty and, and I won't lie. It was a terrifying time to spend the money and buy, acquire something new because yeah. things seemed to be going super well. Uh, but it, I feel like it, maybe even now still like, just playing things kind of month to month like what's what's going to happen you just it's so hard to do forecasting and predictions and you know as much as there's a gut feeling to all of this like we try to base a lot of these decisions on on the numbers on the science of it and uh that's been really hard to do yeah um like pippin said we did we made some adjustments to the how we structured this deal that quite honestly i feel like made it more more fair for all of us. Like we all felt a little better, like, you know, uh, which again comes back to dealing with good people. Um, all, all acquisitions are better when you're, when you're kind of heading towards the same, uh, like mutual win rather than trying to beat the other person, which I honestly pivot. And I said this on closing day, as we had our like corny little moment where we send each other pictures of a cheers. Cause that's literally how we did closing is we took pictures of ourselves cheersing. Um, which is strange, but you know, it really did feel like we were working together on this deal, not against each other. Um, so I can't imagine doing any, any, a deal that wasn't like that during so much uncertainty, but yeah, yeah, we definitely saw, we've definitely seen a big pickup over the last four or five months. I think so many more businesses are trying to move online and we've tried to figure out how can we help? Um, we've got a lot of tools to help you get online and just saying, um, you know, how, how can we help you get your business, which is very similar to how I theme started during a recession in 2008. Yeah. Nobody, apparently nobody told Corey there was a recession. So he was like, <laughs> oh, I'll start a business. Um, but apparently that's a, not the worst time to start an online business and say, especially when you take it from the posture of how can I help? I think you're really just putting it in the hands of people that are willing to be entrepreneurs and their, their hand is forced uh, sometimes, you know, for, sometimes for worse and sometimes for better for those that are able to make it. But a lot of people try uh, when that uncertainty is high in the normal mm -hmm. flow of things. And we also saw, because, you know, you can't go anywhere, um, that all those statistics about the percentage of people that still weren't online after all these years of the Internet being obviously part of our day-to-day -day lives, it, we really saw it come to fruition as businesses were forced to get online just to, stay alive whatsoever. So certainly fascinating yeah. dynamics there. And then Matt, what do you, uh, what do you want to leave RCP customers with? And then uh, maybe I themes customers for what they can expect as well. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, first just to the existing RCP community, uh, I, I want to just stress again, we, 
we don't take lightly of what we're taking on. Um, we don't take lightly the responsibility we have to, you know, Sandhills legacy. Um, you know, the, a lot of these customers, uh, I, I would venture to say a very large percentage chose RCP because they had trust in our existing trust in one way or another with Sandhills, with Pippin, with his team. Um, they've built that reputation. And we understand that we hold a little piece of that now. Uh, it doesn't just go away because of, of a deal. And, and we take that really seriously. Uh, I think iThemes, we've got a spectacular team that's so much better than me. Um, I don't take any credit for how great iThemes is. We've got uh, our support team is led by, an, you know, we've got an amazing leader over there and each person on the team, super proud of uh, our, our dev team as well. You know, I, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to, to kind of serve a new, a group, new group of customers um, and, uh, and to iThemes customers, you know, I think this is exciting opportunities. iThemes has, sort of been, I'm going to use the word entrenched because it could be both negative and positive. Um, and I think it is both negative and positive in, in sort of this utilities space, uh, backups, security, um, s- remote site management with sync. Like these are, we're very much on the utility side and, and nobody, you got to pay your electric bill every month, but nobody's like, yes, I get to pay the electric. My electric bill was so great this month. The electricity was on the whole time. Um, you know, if you're thinking like that, then your electricity, your electric company probably sucks. But <laughs> we we build our products to be in the background. Uh, if you have to think about backups, we didn't do Backup Buddy right. Um, this is an opportunity for us to go back onto that uh, to help customers, you know, move from the cost side to the profit side of the sheet, of yeah. the balance sheet. And we're very excited about that. Um, we've We've got a history of, uh, using our training and our different tool, our different bundles um, to provide sort of a roadmap to to profit for our customers. And so actually having um, the membership platform to do that um, is really exciting. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be, the rest of this year is going to be really fun. And uh, I can't wait, can't wait to dive into next year. That's awesome. I really appreciate both of y'all coming on and talking to me today. Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, Restrict Content Pro go into very capable hands. Both of y'all's companies have been longtime supporters and partners with PostStatus. So uh, thanks for coming on and sharing this news with us and and talking about uh, the whole process with our audience. You know, we've got people that are going to be interested in this from really every aspect, whether they are users of iThemes products, whether they're users of Sand Hills development products, whether they are uh, people that are also interested in buying or selling uh, businesses. We've, you know, that's this consolidation of the WordPress market is ongoing and will continue to be ongoing. And uh, I love being able to get insights from the people that are actively going through it. So thanks to both of y'all for participating in this conversation today. And uh, if you, anyone wants to, you know, get the news on this, or like check out the the blog posts from the source. Um, Pippin, y'all put this on sandhillsdev.com, the launch announcement, and uh, I believe on iThemes.com for the iThemes side of things. And then, you know, go to poststatus.com if you want to check it out. Go to poststatus.com slash club. Join the club if you want to get in the conversation and Slack to talk about this acquisition and other stuff going on. Um, you know, all the business stuff we tend to nerd out on and around the post status space, but... I got to give a two second plug to the post status slack um, (laughs) about how much of the initial parts of this deal happened in post status (laughs) slack, because that was the only communication source Pippin and I had mutually um, for us to talk. So, Hey, post status slack. Well, we love true. I think our first six months of it was literally all in post status slack. And then, and then all deleted because uh, post status (laughs) slack archive doesn't save sadly. So, Oh, darn it. That's okay. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So go check out the Post Status Club if you uh, are interested in conversations like that, um, public and private. You know, a stunningly high percentage of our conversations in Slack are actually in private messages. Uh, they send you a thing. It's like seventy eight percent of your conversations this week were in DMs. So, word, the WordPress business goes down in the Post Status uh, Slack. So. Absolutely. 
All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will catch everybody next time, and we'll see you later. Congrats, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank